pleasures waiting for you. A double pleasure from double mint gum. A double great feeling making you realize double is the one for you. Completely by accident, I have purchased two 1993 Cadillac Alantes leaking identical puddles of fluid in my garage. I had zero intention of buying these Italian body Cadillacs from the last year of production with the notorious North Star V8 engine, but here they sit. And even crazier, I traded off one of my most rare special cars to buy these two hunks of junk. When they first arrived and I saw the numerous issues both of these cars had, I was seriously questioning my sanity. But even more crazy is the story of how the Alante got built in the first place. Now the word Alante may sound like a quaint little village on the Italian Riviera, but really the word Alante came from nothing. I googled around to try and find something like Alante, and the closest I could find was something in Spanish, Alante with one L, a derivative of Atalante, which just means Ford. But really, that wasn't the inspiration of this name. The marketers at Cadillac openly admitted that the name came from nothing. Even worse, rather than getting a creative group together to come up with a new name for a car, they used a computer to come up with 1,700 random names and then picked Alante. That is a really weird way to name a car, obviously, but even stranger is how this car was made in the first place. Now, back in the mid 80s, General Motors wanted a two seat convertible to compete with cars like the Jaguar XJS and the Mercedes SL. And they decided, rather than going in house with their own designers and engineers, that they wanted help from the Italians. More specifically, Pininfarina, legendary design house who designed beautiful cars like my Ferrari 348, countless Ferraris, Fiats. And more recently, I'm seeing more of those Pininfarina designed uh, soda dispensers in movie theaters. But they didn't just go with Pininfarina for the design. They had them build the bodies in Italy, then ship the bodies by a 747 cargo plane to the United States where they were mated with a Cadillac platform, a Cadillac drivetrain. If you think this whole process sounds really expensive, it certainly was. This 1993 had a base MSRP of almost $60,000, which when you adjust for inflation, is over $100,000 in today's money. $100,000 for this. I guess Cadillac thought that all of the effort and expense would be worth it, but when the Elante was unveiled to the public for the 1987 model year, it wasn't very well received. The styling isn't Pininfarina's greatest hit, for sure. It's much more blocky than the typical Italian design cars you would think of yesteryear. But the styling is fine. That wasn't the main issue that people complained about. It had more to do with the GMness of this thing. The fact that they took a sporty two seat convertible but barely evolved the Cadillac underpinnings from the 1970s land yachts. It's still a front wheel drive platform with a way underpowered and heavy V8 engine. And there were numerous other issues you would typically associate with General Motors products of this era that really brought down the Elante. To put it succinctly, this is the Olive Garden of cars. With that, let's begin my tour of the Olive Garden of cars, starting with my red 1993 Elante. You can see the Pininfarina badging on the fender, like many Italian cars, including my Ferrari inside. But as soon as you open the door, you know it is a 90s Cadillac. Now, when these first came out, the interiors were much more primitive. By 1992, I think they upgraded the interior quite a bit to make the seats more comfortable. But they still managed to find another Pininfarina badge to put on the interior. It's actually 3D. Pretty neat. The wood in here is aftermarket, but the gauges are very 80s General Motors. Digital gauges. I have automatic climate control, a car computer, built-in stereo and cassettes, along with a funky shaped curved dashboard. And it's driver's focus, you can see this is tilted into you, which is pretty neat. And this red Elante I have is the hot rod version. Ignore the belt squeak, but this thing has an exhaust and a tune on it of all things. And powering this Elante is the North Star V8 engine, which was exclusive to the 1993 model year, the final year of production of the Elante. It actually started out with a 4.1 V8 that was awful, and a 4.5 V8 that was 
really bad as well. A little more reliable than this, I'll get to that in a bit, but way, way less power. Let's move on to the white one. Now, crappy wheels on this one aside, both of them are in very nice cosmetic condition. They both have over 100,000 miles on them, but the white one is just a little bit nicer. And I put the top up so I can now demonstrate to you the dumbest soft top operation I've ever seen in my entire life which is a combination of electric and manual operation. This is not a full power top, but it does have switches to open a few things. To release the front latch, you have to activate this electric motor here, which pops the front. And then you open these two covers. You hear the noise going on here. And you pull this all back manually. And then, even more goofy, you have to put this top down manually. It is, it is super awkward. And for $60,000 or over $100,000 in today's money, you would have thought they could come up with an electric top system or you just make it completely manual. A couple simple latches and it pops. Why make it a combination of electric and manual? It's so weird that really the only person who would like this is Doug DeMiro just because just because it's so weird. But this white one, the interior is just slightly nicer. The leather's in better shape. It also has the peel and stick wood kit and these custom embroidered Alante floor mats. Oh yes, these seats are very nice. Good old school cushy Cadillac seats. So I think I'll take this one for a spin first and explain how I ended up with two of the cheapest Cadillac Alantes in the USA. This one's stock, so it doesn't bark nearly as loud. Cadillac did manage to fix a few things that people complain about with the Elante. They improved the interior by a lot by this year. And in 1993, they finally gave the Elante a motor it deserved, the North Star V8, which bumped up the horsepower to 300 horsepower, which means this thing can really move. Not bad at all, but this engine is the notorious North Star V8, which is known for blowing its head gasket. The head bolts will strip in the aluminum block, which breaks the seal, the head gasket seal from the block and the heads, which sends combustion gases into the cooling system and coolant into the combustion chamber, which just is disastrous for the engine. Fixing it, unfortunately, requires removing the engine from the car, taking it all apart. Most of the time, it completely totals the cars all together. By some miracle, it appears this car has survived almost 140,000 miles on its original head gasket, which in my experience from being a car dealer many years ago is right at or a little after when these head gaskets normally blow, but this one seems fine. It has plenty of other issues though. While the Elante was considered a failure, they did manage to sell 20,000 units during its production run, which isn't that bad, and there are plenty for sale. I guess people thought that these were gonna be very collectible, so there's a lot of nice low mileage examples for sale that people just stashed away in their garage, but they aren't worth hardly anything. You can pick up a nice low mileage Elante for well under $10,000. And unfortunately, neither of my Elantes are nice or low miles, but I traded for them anyway, because I'm a moron. More on that in the red car. As we transition over to the red Elante, if you are a hoopty owner or know a hoopty owner like me, I have the perfect gift for yourself or the person that you know, and that is hoopty keychains. I partner with InShane Designs to create the ultimate hoopty accessory. Notice the Hoovies Garage logo with the hoopty logo on the side. It is double sided and perfect to show your hoopty pride. So if you own a hoopty like one of these, go to the link in the description below and buy your hoopty keychain just in time for the holidays. You'll also be enabling my hoopty buying habit, so I appreciate it. Let's roll. This one is much faster than the white one and a lot more hilarious. <laughs> the torque steer is ridiculous. So to recap, how I ended up with two 
cheap Alantes? Well, I get emails from viewers just like you wanting me to buy cars from them or wanting to buy my cars. And one of the cars I got a lot of emails from people wanting to buy was my 1966 Chrysler Imperial Crown Convertible. A beautiful car that I bought in California after doing Jay Leno's Garage TV show and him encouraging me to buy one. So it is a very special car just from the sentimental attachment of that experience, but also an extremely rare convertible. There were less than a thousand of those made in 1966, and I doubt there's more than a hundred or so still surviving. So finding another one will be next to impossible. And that's why when I made a video about it, a lot of people emailed me wanting to buy it. But I said no easily until one guy from Ohio told me he had two Cadillac Alantes that he wanted to trade me towards my Imperial plus $18,000. Now, I paid $22,000 for my Imperial plus shipping and then a little bit in repairs, not that much. So let's say that's about twenty-four dollars or $25,000 into the Imperial, which means I would get two Alantes for the grand total of three dollars to $5,000. I really didn't want to do it, but it sounded kind of funny. So I replied to the email saying, I don't know, send me some pictures, but maybe I'll do it for $20,000 and the two Alantes. He replied, sure, send me pictures. The pictures look good. And before a computer could come up with 1,700 ways for me to say no, I had sold off my Imperial and received two very broken Cadillac Alantes. And if you're wondering how the previous owner got a hold of these two Cadillac Alantes, he actually bought them off of a retired couple that decided to sell everything they own and live out of an RV. So they were his and hers Alantes. But now they are my Alantes, the double fail twins, as I'd like to call them, because there is a lot wrong with them. The red Alante, other than the wheels, it is leaking oil and coolant. And of course, there's that annoying belt squeak that squeaks all the time when you're driving. With the white one, it's just leaking oil, but when I stop at a light, it gives a low oil pressure warning. Hopefully, that's just the sensor. Additionally, the shocks are completely blown. There's other little things wrong with both cars, along with things I'm sure I don't know about, which my mechanic will find when I get them up for the wizard inspection. And my plan is to keep one and sell the other, or sell one and keep the other, but I can't decide which one I like less or hate more. Both cars have qualities that attract me, but both of them also give me the same unsettling feeling in my stomach as a Tour of Italy plate at the Olive Garden. So I guess the deciding factor will be how much is wrong with either of the cars. Thank you for watching.